Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Suicidal Angels Profane Prayer out March 1st on Nuclear Blast. The album has 9 tracks, 48 minutes in length, and this is the band's 8th full length studio album. They are a Greek thrash metal band. Now, from a design standpoint, this album offers something that I think is really important, specifically for thrash metal bands. A lot of bands these days, in the past, even Suicidal Angels with previous records, sometimes put together records that are so balanced that it's really hard to see the differences or, or to feel the uniquenesses between the songs in order to create more of a dynamic movement. And that makes the album feel at times a little bit redundant, at least as the overall experience is concerned. It's not the case with this record, and this record also proves that you don't have to change too much. You don't have to add too much in order to make the overall design better and in order for that design to give a much better experience to the listener. You just need a few songs, and in this case, three. Starting off with When the Lions Die, the opening track, one of the singles from the record, and I think having the single open up the album and being a song that it's so intensive, that's so aggressive, it's a great way to start off the album because it starts off on the right note. The next song that plays a big impact on the design and on the overall experience is Death Stalker at number four. This is a different style song. It starts off with acoustic guitars. I'll get more into it because it's one of my favorite songs of the album, but it's a track that has a lot of new characteristics to it, a lot of new elements, and it really breaks the mold in terms of what came before and what comes after. And then the record closes off with the Fire Pads of Faith, the longest song on the album, really a climatic song. It's like this, there's this climax that just builds throughout the track. It's a journey within the journey, but it's a great closing song, has great characteristics, and it's the style track that you can't fit anywhere else in the record that it's not gonna have a negative impact on the experience. You really want a song with these characteristics, with this length, to be the closing song. So I really enjoyed this design because without changing too much, without breaking away from the DNA of the band, they were able to create a very dynamic, a very engaging, a very interesting album experience. Now, as far as the sound is concerned, they've always had this thrash metal, this rugged thrash metal sound that's very intense, very aggressive, and heavily focused on the guitar sound. The tonality of the guitars, the delivery, the execution has their own DNA, has their own fingerprint, and that is something that has stayed consistent over time. And this record definitely keeps that DNA alive and well. The moment you start the record with When the Lions Die and you hear that first guitar riff, you know you're listening to Suicidal Angels. Nobody else has that sound, nobody else has that approach, and this record is able to keep that DNA of the band and allow it to move forward. Now, the way they moved it forward is that I felt that the production on this record and the drum sound on this album gives the record a little bit more of a fuller experience. Not to say that previous records didn't have volume, but having volume and feeling full is not necessarily the same thing. They've always been a band, like I said, that uses aggression and intensity, driven by the guitar sound, but sometimes that aggression and that intensity doesn't necessarily correlate to, a, not a, I'm not gonna say a thicker sound, but a more fuller experience where everything has a little bit more life. Even though you have one element that drives it, even though you have one element that's standing on the podium, the other ones need to kind of uh, come in and help that one piece of the puzzle become the full picture. And I felt that on this record, perhaps for the first time in a long time, the album really feels complete across all the parameters. When you look at the drums, when you look at the guitars, when you look at the bass, when you look at the vocals, this album, without necessarily feeling, feeling over thick or having a lot of volume, it definitely has a much wider footprint. Like I said, it feels fuller. It feels like it has more substance surrounding the sound. One of the elements that helps that outside of the magnificent production that this album has, really outstanding production, is the drums. I, I enjoy the drum sound on this album tremendously because the drums are heavy, but they're not overly heavy where they overpower the songs. There are moments within tracks where the drums gain a little bit more volume, they gain a little bit more presence, they become a little bit more impactful, they become a little bit more noticeable. So this also creates ebbs and flows throughout the entire drum sound of the album, not allowing it to become stagnant. The other aspect of the drums that I really liked was the use of the cymbals. It helped 
stretched out the sound a little bit more because when you have a sound that's very compact uh, as far as the drums are concerned it removes size it makes things feel slightly shorter so adding the cymbals and allowing them to be impactful in the overall soundscape allowing them to travel through the ears of the listener definitely allows the songs to also feel bigger out adding to that feeling of being fuller that I was speaking about earlier once you move away from the drums and you start looking at the guitars because when it comes to suicidal angels I feel like the guitars are always the first topic of discussion the guitars are what you would come to expect from one of their records first of all the solo sections throughout the album phenomenal I love the guitar solos I love the sound I love the impact I love the explosive nature that they have but overall the riffs the melodies the grooviness the aggression the intensity th this album is just so strong guitar wise but it still allows the guitars to give room for the other elements to also have a say and in, in what the sound is going to be like but incredible guitar album uh, from top to bottom across all of the different elements then adding acoustic guitars is a different piece of the puzzle that makes things a little bit more texture that makes things slightly more diverse definitely a little bit more um a, a, a little bit a little bit warmer uh, i should say as well and then the last piece is definitely the vocals i think nick's vocals are phenomenal it has this raspiness to it uh, that that vocal delivery with that raspiness really matches the aggression and intensity that you get from the guitar sound it even matches the tonality uh, the the tone that the guitars and the tuning that the guitars have so I, I really enjoyed his vocal performance on this record very consistent top to bottom with perhaps the only difference was some clean vocals in Death Stalker that I was not expecting but it worked really well throwing a little bit of a wrench if you will into the overall stability and balance that the vocals have from start to finish uh, overall this album surpasses its predecessor because it feels more complete uh, I honestly felt that Ears of Aggression had great songs great individual tracks uh, but something was missing as far as the collective was concerned this album found out whatever that missing link was whatever that missing piece was and brought it in and made the overall experience a lot more mature everything comes together a lot better so great record all around i'm going to go as far as to say that this is going to be one of the best thrash metal albums of 2024 i know it's early but an album like this will be one of those records that fans of the genre will be playing will be listened to will be talking about for the remainder of the year now as far as favorite songs are concerned i want to start off with crypts of madness this is the second track on the album and the riffage that started off with when the lions die continues with this song the heavy drums behind it really creates this nice uh, wall of sound that the vocals punch through and that's an important element of this song is having the vocals punch through that sound the vocals also have some layers and that allows the vocal performance to have a similar size or a similar bandwidth as the sound has and I think that's that's nice to have that conjunction of two elements offering some similarities if you will it has a catchy chorus amazing solo bringing in at times a little bit of a Slayer-esque style sound approach riffage killer song as far as I'm concerned next we have Death Stalker this is a standout track for a lot of elements uh, it starts off with acoustic guitars then it bridges into a more melodic methodic sound still heavy it's not a song that loses heaviness but it doesn't have that intensity it has aggression but it doesn't have intensity and because it doesn't have that intensity the underlying of the song becomes a little bit more darker and allows them to bring in some classic heavy metal elements into a thrash metal song i would say that this track is heavily inspired by iron maiden there is that new wave of british heavy metal feel uh, in the song in the melodies in the guitar playing because the guitar playing is not as intense and is not as aggressive as other songs on the album and you see that with the start with the acoustic start and then from a vocal standpoint you also see that more classic new wave of British heavy metal sound coming in with the clean vocals so it's a song that uh, has a lot of life within it eight minutes but it has so much movement it has so much to offer it's a super interesting dynamic song and a song that's completely different through of anything else on the record anything that came before and anything that comes after is really a standout track that has a great impact 
on the overall flow. It almost gives you a chance to experience a different side of Suicidal Angels on a record that aggression and intensity are pretty much the hallmarks. Last but not least, The Return of the Reaper. This is one of the catchiest, hookiest songs on the record. I love the vocal reverb because it has this live feel to it. It brings an old school approach that you don't see a lot of bands using these days. It was super popular in the early 90s with thrash metal bands, even with death metal bands. You just don't see it as often anymore. But I like that feel because it brings a little bit of a throwback style into the song. It's a track that's heavy, that's aggressive, that has great riffage. Outstanding uh, guitar solo section once again, really breaking the track, really giving it life and energy. And it has great drum sound. At times, a little bit overpowering because it comes into the forefront, but it's really sporadic, more consistently uh, filling in the space and filling in the song uh, once in a while, coming over the top, becoming a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more impactful, if you will. But that adds also heaviness and aggression to the overall feel. This is an absolute banger of a track. There's simplicity to it, but there's something to be said about a simple song. It becomes memorable, and this song definitely has that going for it. This is it, Suicidal Angels with Profane Prayer, out March 1st on Nuclear Blast. Let me know your thoughts on the band on the singles. Hit me up in the comment section. I'll see you all at the next video.